It's a small sphere. It's about 1.68 inches or larger, and it has a lot of valleys or dimples in the surface. This started with a small mistake. A golf ball got damaged, a few dents, nothing special. But when someone hit it, it flew farther than any smooth ball ever had. That was in 1905. Since then, golf balls have never been the same. Those tiny dimples didn't just help people play better. They opened a strange new door, a way to control air, a way to make things faster, smoother, quieter. And now, those same ideas are being tested on propellers, wings, and even massive ships. It sounds simple, but it's not, because air doesn't like to be told what to do. Let's begin. A question in the air. It all began with a question most people wouldn't think to ask. Why did old golf balls, the ones with scratches and dents, fly farther than the smooth, brand new ones? William Taylor, an optician from England, couldn't stop wondering. He wasn't an engineer. He didn't work in a lab. But he built a wind tunnel with his own hands and filled it with smoke. Just to watch how the air moved. He saw something strange. The balls with tiny dents didn't fight the air. They guided it, like a hand parting a stream. Soon, golf balls were made with dimples on purpose. Each one was shaped and placed to control invisible currents. By changing how air flowed around the ball, the dimples reduced drag and made the ball fly twice as far. But this wasn't just about sport. Taylor had stumbled onto something much bigger, something that would later catch the attention of car makers, plane designers, and even shipbuilders. Because if tiny dimples could help a ball fly, what could they do for the machines that move our world? The question left the golf course. It entered the wind tunnels of the future, and people began to listen the whispering force of drag. Drag isn't something we see, but it's always there. Every time something moves through air or water, drag tries to pull it back, like an invisible hand gripping the surface, slowing it down, stealing energy. There are two main kinds. One is called pressure drag. It happens when air can't stay attached to a moving object leaving a low-pressure bubble behind it. That bubble pulls the object backwards, like a parachute made of nothing. The other is skin friction drag. This one is simpler. It's like rubbing your hand against water. The faster you go, the harder it pushes back. Most shapes, like the wing of a plane or the blade of a turbine, are designed to cut through air cleanly. But even perfect shapes can't escape drag. And that's where dimples come in. They don't remove drag completely. They make one kind worse. The skin friction increases because of the roughness. But they shrink the pressure bubble behind the object, reducing pressure drag by a lot. For a golf ball, that's a trade worth making. Less pressure drag means it flies straighter, longer, with more control. But what about things that aren't shaped like golf balls? Could dimples still help? That's what engineers wanted to find out. Dimpled truths and turbulent layers. At first glance, dimples seem wrong. They mess up the smooth surface. They look damaged. But in reality, they're doing something clever. When air moves across a surface, it forms a thin layer right next to it. This is called the boundary layer. A fragile zone where air moves more slowly, clings tightly, and decides whether to stay attached or break away. If it detaches too soon, it creates that big, low-pressure wake behind the object. That's pressure drag. Dimples fix that. By stirring up the air in the boundary layer, they make it turbulent, full of tiny, swirling currents. Turbulent air, strangely enough, sticks better. It has more energy and can follow the curve of the object longer before breaking away. So the dimples don't fight the air, they talk to it. 
they give it just enough disturbance to hold on a little longer. And in return, the wake behind the object becomes smaller. The drag becomes weaker. But this only works well with round, blunt shapes. Golf balls, spheres, things that aren't built to glide. What about thin, sharp surfaces like airplane wings or propeller blades? On those, the main drag isn't pressure, it's friction. The very kind dimples make it worse. That's where things get complicated and interesting. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. When golf balls met the sky. So the idea of dimples moved from golf courses to research labs, wind tunnels, simulations. Engineers asked, could this trick work on wings, on drones, on propellers that cut through air instead of spinning in silence? At first, the answer wasn't clear. Aerodynamic surfaces, like propeller blades, are already streamlined. They don't create big wakes like golf balls do. Their curves are designed to avoid pressure drag from the start. Adding dimples seemed unnecessary, or worse, harmful. Because remember, dimples increase skin friction. Still, researchers kept testing. In one 2020 or 20 study, scientists simulated a dimpled propeller blade, similar to those used on drones. At higher angles, where air becomes harder to control, the dimples didn't fail. They helped. The lift-to-drag ratio improved by nearly 40%. It wasn't just about flying farther anymore. It was about controlling air at its most chaotic points and shaping it just enough to keep it useful. That changed things. If dimples could help in edge cases, in moments of stress or angle or spin, then they weren't just for balls. They were tools waiting to be placed carefully, used precisely. But the real surprise wasn't in the sky. It was waiting underwater, in silence, among steel giants. The experiment that sank and saved ships. Water holds its secrets, and it punishes mistakes. For massive cargo ships and submarines, one of the most dangerous problems is something called cavitation. When propellers spin quickly through water, pressure drops near their edges. If it drops too far, vapor bubbles form and then collapse violently. These collapsing bubbles might seem small, but they can eat through solid metal. They create noise, vibration, and over time, they destroy the propellers. Engineers have been trying to stop cavitation for decades. Stronger materials helped, so did slower spinning, but none of it solved the problem. Then, someone remembered the golf ball. In a 2025 study, engineers tested marine propeller blades with tiny dimples carved near their tips. Just a few. Just enough to disturb the water, to stir it before it could tear itself apart. And it worked. Those small dimples created swirling pockets of water, like turbulence, but helpful. These little currents softened the pressure changes, smoothed out the flow, and made the deadly bubbles disappear. Cavitation was reduced by up to 95%, not through new engines, not through expensive metals, just through tiny changes to the surface, invisible to the eye. It was a quiet revolution, and it proved something deeper, that controlling flow isn't always about power. Sometimes it's about listening and knowing where to nudge. Ghosts in the boundary layer. Something is haunting about the boundary layer. It's thin, sometimes just millimeters thick, but everything depends on it. A plane's lift, a ship's drag, the silence or noise of a blade cutting air. Most of the time, it's ignored, until it misbehaves. Over the years, engineers found other ways to whisper to this layer. Not with dimples, but with tiny fins called vortex generators. 
These little blades don't push the air. They disturb it. They create miniature whirlwinds along the surface, energizing the boundary layer just enough to keep it attached. In the 1980s, NASA ran tests with them. They worked. Quietly, steadily. Wind turbines started using them too, especially near the base of each blade, where drag was highest. A German company called SmartBlade began installing vortex generators on thousands of turbines. The result? More torque, more power. More energy is pulled from the wind. Only a 2% gain, perhaps. But across hundreds of turbines, that's millions of kilowatt hours. And it came from shapes smaller than your finger. Shapes that didn't force the air, they invited it to stay. Like dimples, vortex generators reminded engineers of something we keep forgetting. The flow doesn't need to be conquered. It just needs to be understood. Propellers that think like dolphins. Not all inspiration comes from machines. Some come from nature, from creatures that learned long ago how to move through fluid with grace. Dolphins don't have dimples, but their skin isn't smooth either. It has tiny structures that shift and adapt. These microtextures create controlled turbulence, helping dolphins move faster with less effort, less drag, less noise. Engineers in China took this idea and blended it with what they'd learned from golf balls. The result was a new kind of coating, flexible, textured, and barely visible, designed for ship propellers. These coatings don't just reduce pressure drag like dimples, they go further they reduce skin friction itself. The microstructures guide how turbulence forms, keeping it tight, focused, and efficient. In test voyages across 35,000 nautical miles, massive cargo ships saved nearly 2% in fuel. That doesn't sound like much, until you realize these ships burn thousands of liters every hour. The savings added up to over $140,000 a year, all from a surface treatment that costs a fraction of that. Some believe hydrophobic materials are part of the design, repelling water to glide even easier. But whether it's dolphin skin, dimples, or something stranger, the message is the same. Efficiency begins on the surface, where no one's looking. It's easy to overlook the surface. We focus on engines, on power on the loud and the large. But often, what changes everything is quiet, small, hidden in plain sight, a dented golf ball, a ripple in water, a coating thinner than a fingernail. What started as a curiosity in 1905 became a guide, teaching us how to listen to flow, not just fight it. Dimples, vortex fins, dolphin skin coatings all speak the same language not one of force, but of understanding. Because sometimes, the biggest step forward is realizing the air and water were never the enemy. They were always waiting to help.